an Atiyoshpaya concept, um, I will use you as an example. Okay? Um, your mother and her sisters, they're all these ladies are, are your mothers. Okay? And the husbands of these women are your fathers. And all the children from these marriages are brothers and sisters. This is uh, how that works so far, okay? Now, your mother's brothers, those are your uncles, okay? Your mother's brothers are your uncles, and their wives are your aunts, and their children are your cousins, okay? So that takes care of your mother's side of the family. Your father and his brothers are all fathers too, okay? And the wives of these men are also your mothers, and the children of those marriages are also brothers and sisters. Now, your father's sisters, those are your aunts. And their husbands are your uncles. And their children are your cousins. This is the Teoshpaya concept. Okay? That's the organization. Now, that's just the foundation. Okay? Now, we, we take it up. In the Teoshpai, people who have the same talent, they form a society because everybody has a talent, okay? So they form a society and they help each other. They give each other ideas to inspire each other, to constantly develop their talent. Whatever it is, whether it's hunting, cooking, uh, you know, making clothes, whatever it is, yeah, they inspire each other. They'll say, oh, try this out. What do you think? Hey, that's pretty good. So what ends up happening is that everybody is providing some kind of service to the entire group, the entire Teoshmai. Now, this also includes other talents that that don't have anything to do with hunting or or um, you know cooking or making clothes or you know that, things like that. It has there's there's other things too like people are wise sometimes people are really smart and that's their talent so they will be in councils discussing things and and you know and, and, and making things, you know, uh, work for the good of the entire community, okay? But each talent formed a society, yeah? Kind of like okola kichie, they call it. This is like a, um, it's like a club or, you know, something, uh, but they call it a society, yeah? And when children are born, the adults watch the children and they get an idea of, you know, what kind of talents these children are going to have. So they watch them and they see you know, how they develop. And, and, and there's also games that uh, the children play. And part of the games are to, are kind of like tests. Yeah, they're kind of like aptitude tests. These games, they teach things. And they also, you know, um, teach cooperation, yeah? competition through cooperation, Co cooperation through competition, both ways, okay? And this is a healthy concept. And through these games, they can tell which kids are going to be good at, so they take them aside. The people who are good at hunting, they'll take the kids out that are, really, you know, seem to be excelling in that area, for example, yeah, and then they'll slowly teach them how to handle, you know, they they get toy weapons, toy bow and arrow, toy spears, 
and then they play games through that to develop their skills. Okay? As they get older, they slowly brought to the hunt. They hold, uh, they, they, you know, they kind of stand by and watch how things happen. And, and then as they get older, they slowly join. Yeah? And when, as they're observing all of this, they see what happens. They observe, they, they observe. <laughs> <laughs> they, I was trying to say observe and see at the same time. <laughs> they observe. <laughs> That's Dave English. <laughs> they, they see the whole process. Yeah, that when when they bring a buffalo down, they see that before the hunt, there's a prayer, there's a ceremony. The ceremony is apologizing to the buffalo nation that they're going to take one or whatever they need and that they're only going to take what they need, but they're going to use every part of the buffalo that they can and that the buffalo is going to feed everybody. Yeah, It's not just going to feed the person who took it down. It's going to feed the whole community. They see this happening. They hear this prayer, and then they go do the hunt. Yeah? And then uh, when the hunt is over, they, they make an offering to the buffalo people. They take something from themselves and offer it to the buffalo people as a thanksgiving and an apology. And they repeat that vow again that they're going to use this for, you know, use everything. And they honor the buffalo people. They thank them and they give something back. Everybody will benefit from this. So there's no selfishness involved. Okay. They see this as little children. They see this is the way. And so when they bring bring the animals back, there's celebration, there's feast, everybody's going to be fed. If somebody needs new pants, a new dress, that's going to come from there. Yeah, And there's tools that are come from the bones, the stomachs make the soup kettles, the tails serve a purpose, the, the skull is going to be used for ceremonies, the horns serve a purpose. Everything serves a purpose. Yeah, They see this, and they see that everybody gets fed. So the buffalo does not belong to a family. It belongs to the entire group. So when you see a movie um, where um, you know, they, they, they hunt buffalo, and then the families go and stand by the buffalo that their, their hunter brought down, this is incorrect. That's totally false. That is. I saw that in a movie, a recent movie in the 1990s. Um, I can't remember if it was a Crazy Horse movie or or what, but they did something like that, and that's false. It's totally false. Yeah, that's that's a Hollywood idea. That's not our idea. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Movies don't always tell the correct information. Always keep that in mind. Okay, so. After they bring that back and they see that everybody is celebrating and and that this is going to uh, help everybody, see these children. They see this as they as they age, yeah. So by the time they become hunters, see now they're in that mindset. So they're they're thinking with a community mindset, yeah. That ev- that whatever they do is for for the it's for the good of the camp and the cooks. Yeah, they they know what to do. Uh, the people who make clothes, they know what to do, you know, with with the animal and stuff like that. And and uh, the people who make tools, they know what to do. And everything is everybody is is taking part. Yeah, everybody is benefiting from this. And they see that everybody is important. That the hunters are not any more important than those who cook. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? Yes, the hunters bring in the animal, but the hunters, they don't know how to cook. They're not tool builders. Do you see what I mean? So they they have to, everybody is serving a purpose. Everybody. Everybody is important. Nobody is more important than the other because every talent is different. You cannot compare talents. You cannot say this talent is better than that talent. You cannot say that because that's apples and oranges. You can't say apples are better than oranges unless you're allergic to one. You know what I mean? Yeah, I said that now I want oranges. 
<laughs> Maybe in the music break I'll have an orange. <laughs> uh, shoot. But this is a this is a how a Teoshbaya worked long time ago. Yeah, and then look at when you call each other, you do not call each other by name. You call each other by how you're related to them. That's the kinship term. So to all your mothers, look, you have a bunch of mothers. You say ina to every one of them. To all your fathers, you say ate. Yeah, to all your aunts, you say tumi. To all your uncles, you say lekshi. And then there's the brother sister terms, and those are there's a whole bunch of them. Yeah, there's there's different ones for boys, different ones for girls, and same thing for the cousin terms. There's different terms for boys and different terms for girls, so you have to learn all of them. So that's how you call each other. You never say, you know, like say for example, if Sitting Bull were to visit Crazy Horse, which he did, uh, Crazy Horse never said, "Hi, Sitting Bull, how are you?" Yeah, he never said that. He called him Lekshi because Sitting Bull is the generation of Crazy Horse's parents. Yeah, so Sitting Bull called him Uncle. Yeah. How like she, you know, Diane Wa Chung, hello. Yeah, it's really good to see you. So he called him uncle. He never said sitting bull. <laughs> yeah, he said uncle. That's how it is in Lakota. You greet each other by how you're related to them. And if you're not related, yeah, if they're if that person is the same generation as you and you're not related, then you call them cousin. Okay, if they're the same generation as your parents, you call them auntie and uncle, depending on if it's a man or a woman, or a woman and a man. You know what I mean? So this is why a crazy horse addressed Sitting Bull as Lekshi, uncle, because he's Sitting Bull was the same generation as as uh, Crazy Horse's uh, parents. See how that works? And if it's the same generation as your children or the generation under you, below you, before you, well, not before, uh, the, the next generation, yeah, then you call, if it, you call them, if you're not related to them, you call them niece and nephew. And all grandchildren are takoja. It doesn't matter if you're related to them or not. You call them takoja. All grandmas and grandpas are grandma and grandpa to everybody. So you say la la to all your grandpas and unchi or unchi la to all your grandmas. This is the tioshpai. So you, nobody ever, people, we had names, but those for, that's for special and ceremonial uses only, okay? But for every day talking, you call each other by how you're related to them. And if you're not related to them, then you use the terms that I just explained. Yeah? So that's how it worked. So we always ad addressed everybody as a relative. That's why when you heard me uh, begin this show, I said, how mitaku yapi, which means, hello, my relatives. I'm greeting you as relatives. And then the Lakota way of thinking, when somebody calls you a relative term, it makes you feel good. It makes you want to talk to that person. Yeah? So we consider ourselves relatives to the animals, to the plants, that which moves and grows, everything. It's, we are all Wamakanshka. Yeah? Wamakanshka is in four categories. And they are um, Hupahu, the winged, Hutopa, the four legged, Hunumpa, the two legged, and Takushka which is everything else, that which moves and grows. So considering everything relatives is a really big concept in our culture. So in the Teoshpai, you see how that fits in. When everybody's calling each other by a kinship term, it makes them feel connected to each other. And then when with everybody doing their talent, everybody is contributing to their society, to their community. So you end up with a very, very healthy community. And people are also 
uh, uh, developing emotionally too, yeah, because when things happen, like when somebody dies, there's a whole ceremony that involves that. When somebody's born, there's another ceremony involved with that. So you see all this happening and you develop emotionally through this. So by the time young people are 15 years old, they are more emotionally developed than most adults today in the modern Western world. Yeah, They know how to prioritize. They know what's important. And they do it. Yeah, Because it works. So that's the Teoshpai system, and that's very similar to what this Mr. Rogers does on his show when he talks about a town, yeah, when they visit a music teacher and maybe they learn a song and you know stuff like that it's that's why I like that show because it's it's very similar to our Lakota concept of Teoshpaya. T is living, yeah, Oshpaya is a group a Teoshpaya is not all people related to each other it's not there's other different groups combined with them too it's just that they all have something in common so you put t together uh, which is to dwell to live at and oshpaya when you put that together you get the word teoshpaya and that's the foundation concept for our society and that's how it works okay now it goes another direction too you are a Teoshpai as well. Yeah? You are a Teoshpai yourself. All by yourself, you are a Teoshpai. Now, what that means is you look within yourself. Look at everything that makes who you are. Your physical body, your mind, your soul, and your emotional self. These are four parts. They connect to each other. And where they connect is deep down inside of you. And that's called your sacred center. So you're, you're, when you are a little child, you're taught to take care of those four parts as best as you can. Yeah? So not only were we physically healthy, we were, we were you know, and spiritually healthy. We were also emotionally healthy and mentally healthy too. Yeah, but you have to go within yourself to do that. Yeah. So and then each part that has that has parts too. Like let's let's look at your body. Look at everything that makes up your body, your heart, your lungs, your toes, your fingernails, your eyelashes, your eyes, your pupils, your your lungs, your liver, your kidneys, your bones, your tendons and nerves and Look at all these things that make up who you are. They all work together. They're all relatives. You see? They're Teoshmaya. Isn't that cool? <laughs> so they all work together. So even the tiniest, tiniest thing in your body, if that gets sick, it could really throw you for a loop. Like, for example, in, in the year 2011, one day, um, I was eating a, a breakfast with sausage and eggs, and, and I started to get a little bit dizzy. So I thought maybe there, I was food poisoned. Yeah, I thought it was uh, maybe the sausage was bad or something. So, um, but I didn't take a shower yet. So I hurried up, and, and I just stopped eating and threw my food in the trash, and I took a, a shower. And when I got out of the shower, oh, my gosh, I was so dizzy. And I had to um, throw up. Yeah, I had to vomit. And um, and luckily, I was in the bathroom. But it got to the point where if I just moved my head a millimeter, I would get dizzy again. The room would just spin, not just in circles, but up and down and sideways. It's like the room was a ball and some kid was shaking in all kinds of directions, and I'm inside the ball. That's what it was like. I've never felt that in my life before. So I knew I had to lay down eventually. So I, I, I 
if like I said, if I just barely moved, I, the the dizziness was just incredibly strong. So I I got my strength together and I said, okay, I'm gonna run down the hallway, put my arms out, you know, so that if I fought, lean to the hall in one way, I'll catch myself on the wall. So I ran down the hallway that way and went to my bedroom, and I got the trash time I got there. I had to throw up some more. And uh, I couldn't believe how much I had thrown up that that day. I couldn't believe that. And it's just unreal. So then um, I laid down in bed and and called somebody to help. And uh, and they um, this was uh, the person I used to know. Yeah, that that um, that's another story. I used to live with somebody that I knew for 15 years in, in 2014. That ended okay and it ended really bad too uh, but i'm at peace with it okay and I'm, I'm okay but anyway this was 2011 and so i called that person and she came right away and uh and she's a doctor yeah so she was able to really help me out and uh and uh so after i i just laid there and and, and just you know just laid still the next morning it stopped. I mean, not the the dizziness was still there, but I didn't feel like throwing up anymore. Yeah, and so for about a week it was really tough. I just stayed in bed basically, but she helped me take a bath and clean, keep myself clean and stuff like that. And, and I'm very thankful for that, by the way. And um, and so. Um, after, after the second week started, I was wondering why am I not getting better? And uh, she looked into this and she said uh, she talked with some other specialists and and she said that uh, it looks like you have an ear infection. And I thought, huh, ear? What does this have to do with my ears? <laughs> and she said, inside your ear, in the deep inner ear, there's a little tiny tiny thing. And this little tiny thing, it has it, it. What it does is it controls your balance. So, for example, when you turn your head, you don't get dizzy. When you stand up, you don't get dizzy. When you walk, you don't get dizzy. When you lay down, you don't get dizzy. When this thing gets infected, you lose all sense of direction, and every little tiny move, you get dizzy. And that's what happened to me. Even just to to put my head up, oh God, the room would just spin like crazy. Yeah, that's why the first few days I just laid still. <laughs> but I was really hurting in the stomach too, yeah, from all that throwing up. So I didn't mind laying still, listen to music and sleep and stuff like that. It was okay. I drank tea and and took stomach medicine. The st- my stomach was okay after a few days, but that dizziness was there for almost a year. I'm not joking. I, it hit me really, really bad. And even today, it's five years later, and I'm probably 90, 98%. Yeah, I'm not 100% yet. It hit me that bad. So um, this shows you, this this thing in my ear, it's, so in, it's in all your ears. Yeah, in our ears, I should say, this is so small that when it get, but the thing is, when it gets sick, you can't function, you can't move because you get dizzy. See how powerful that is? How this so so tiny, minute, yeah, so so minute, and yet, and yet without it. <laughs> We we wouldn't be able to do anything. So our bodies are wonderful creations. Wonderful. Everything works together. That's a teoshpai. Yeah. So so just like this little tiny thing inside your ear, just like that. That's so important. It's just as important as your heart and lungs and your brain and liver and kidney. But this thing is so it's so tiny. But look at the important work that it does. See, everything in a teoshpaye is important. Everybody in a teoshpaye is important. This means 
everyone is important. Yeah? You are very important. You are a blessing. So when you live your life in a healthy way, you know, this is how you're going to find your talent. And when you use your talent in a healthy way, you're going to be blessed for that because of something called wawokie. This is a, a natural law of generosity. And what this means is that whatever you send out in communication returns to you four times as strong. So if it's healthy, it's going to come back as a blessing somehow. Yeah. If it's unhealthy, you're going to mess yourself up because it's coming back four times as strong. So when you hurt others, you hurt yourself even more. See what I mean? That's just, this is what we'll care. So communication, this is, uh, it's not just what you say and it's not just what you do. It's how you say things and it's how you do things. And that, that's just half of it. The other half is how you interpret things. When you see something, how do you interpret that? When you touch or taste something, how do you interpret that? When you hear something, are you really listening? Yeah, because most people today, they don't know how to actively listen. They can hear, but they don't actively listen. So they miss they miss something. See, like right now, there's birds that are just singing all all day here, yeah, uh, outside the, my window because there's a big tree out here. So they're having a jam session. Every day they have a jam session, yeah. <laughs> all kinds of birds out there. It's kind of cool. I like that. <laughs> so uh, I like listening to that, yeah. It's in my in my bedroom, I leave the window open. I just listen to that and enjoy, enjoy the music. <laughs> so, anywho. Um, so that's natural law of generosity, yeah. So it's it's also how you interpret incoming information, yeah. How 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 do you interpret things? So uh, and this means that to really understand something, you have to take the time to check it out, yeah. Because you, you, you don't like it when somebody looks at you and doesn't like the way you look and then calls you a bad person just because they don't like the way you look. You wouldn't like that. So don't do that to others. Because maybe you're a good person, but that person did not take the time to know you. That's not your problem. That's their problem. So don't do that to others. So that again, that means taking the time to check something out. If you don't know anything about it, at least take some time to learn about it and see what it is. Don't judge it before checking it out. So when you do this, so you're communicating in a healthy way. When you are taking the time to check things out, you're communicating in a healthy way. And you learn to do this in a teoshpai as well. This is part of uh, developing emotionally. Yeah, to communicate. So you see this natural law of generosity happening all day long when people are doing things for each other, helping each other, yeah, supporting one another when somebody's having a bad day and you know, people support one another and things like that. So it, it makes for a very strong, healthy society. And likewise, inside of you is a society too. <laughs> yeah? So this is the how we get our definition for this expression, mitake oyasin. Yeah? A lot of people say, all my relations. But most people, they only look at half of it. Yeah? They just see uh, the, everything around them as relatives, and that's only half of it. The other half is everything inside of you too. So the Lakota star knowledge way of defining mitakuya oyas is that we're all connected just like everything inside of us is connected to each other. Yeah. Mitakwe oyas starts inside of you. So how you nurture your connections inside of you 
In other words, how you take care of yourself is going to show, it's going to be reflected in the way you communicate to others. So when you see somebody communicating in an unhealthy way to others, that's a, uh, you can tell that that person is also unhealthy inside of themselves because that communication is a reflection of what's inside of you. So in a Teoshpaya, you learn how to communicate in a healthy way. So you learn this as a child. 